Repealing these COLA cuts, well, that's the right thing to do. That's the right thing to do. We, we're talking about men and women in uniform who have served our nation bravely for more than 20 years. And I have to say, as I stand up in strong support of the prior amendment and restoring these benefits to our veterans, I adamantly oppose the AOT amendment, which is hurtful to children, very hurtful to children, and I'll get into that later. You know, Mr. President, when these veterans first put on the uniform and they promised to protect and defend our nation, we made them a solemn promise to provide them with the care and benefits that they earned. These men and women have sacrificed so much for us, and tragically, too many of them made the ultimate sacrifice. In my state of California, we lost 892 service men and women in Iraq, and we have lost 411 in Afghanistan. We can't break faith with those who put their lives on the line for our nation. We hear about people who have served four times, four deployments, five deployments, six deployments. I've heard of 10 deployments, Mr. President. And, you know, when this benefit was diminished as part of the budget deal, everyone knew that we'd have to move quickly and change it. We knew right away. And that's what we're trying to do. We're not offering a slew of amendments on unrelated matters that hurt children and risking losing this very simple premise, Mr. President, that we honor our men and women in uniform. We want a simple vote. Either you're for the vets or you're not for the vets. It's pretty simple. 35 organizations, do we have the list of those? 35 organizations are supporting this. We must recognize that when you attach unrelated amendments that have nothing to do with veterans, you slow down the bill. We all know that. It's a way to derail things. Look what my friends try to do on unemployment uh, compensation. Get us off on some discussion of how to pay for all that in an emergency situation with the long-term unemployed, and that rate is so high historically. And then we said, okay, we'll play on your turf. We'll agree. We'll find a pay for. We found a pay for. They said they like. No. It wasn't good enough for them. We only got 59. We needed 60. And if anyone thinks that that wasn't planned, I have a plot of land to sell you in a dump somewhere. Come on. We know how it goes around here. Don't tell me 59 and no more, please. Those are games. And this is not an issue we should be playing games about, restoring veterans' benefits. So what we have in the IOT Amendment is an amendment which demeans an entire population. An entire population. The amendment is anti children. It's anti-immigrant. And it doesn't do one thing to help our veterans. But it will hurt some of our young dreamers. We know the dreamers. We've met the dreamers. Those children who came to the United States through no fault of their own, but now they wanted to contribute to our great society by staying in school and staying out of trouble. But yet the IOT Amendment attacks the child care tra tax credit, which impacts some of these dreamers, and which protects 1.5 million children from falling into poverty every year. Mr. President, honestly, this IOT Amendment is so mean-spirited, so unnecessary, I just hope it is defeated soundly. The U.S. poverty rate is now the highest it's been in 20 years, with 22 percent of children living in poverty. Why would someone come down to the floor and attack children? 22 percent of children live in poverty. 
low-income immigrant families who claim the child tax credit earn an average of $23,000 a year. And they use this tax benefit to provide for their children's basic needs, including food, rent, and clothing. This tax credit, which Senator Ayotte would essentially take away from a whole group of people, is an incentive to do the right thing. These low-income families are working hard. They're earning money. But they need a tax break to help care for their children. My Republican friends are always fighting for tax breaks to the top, 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 for the top. What about the people struggling who are working and earning $23,000 a year? Where are my friends on raising the minimum wage? So far, I haven't heard their support. I hope they'll change their mind. Where are my friends? on giving unemployment insurance to those through no fault of their own just can't find a job and who paid into that insurance system. Where are they? They are absent. They, 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 they offer amendments that they know are going to get us off track, distract us, and bring the bill down. But we're not doing it this time, I hope. I hope we will say no to the AOT amendment because it is um, an amendment that guts a very important tax break. So let's be clear. To claim the child tax credit, which is what Senator Ayotte's amendment wants to uh, weaken, families have to file taxes. So we're talking about tax-paying families. The child tax credit only goes to working people who earn money and pay payroll taxes, who pay state and local taxes, and any other taxes they may owe. This AOT amendment is an outrageously disproportionate response to a problem the Internal Revenue Service is addressing. The IRS has implemented changes to improve enforcement. They're working with Department of Homeland Security to make sure that fake documents do not slip through the cracks. Let me be clear, Mr. President, if a person commits fraud in this program as in any other program, we should go after that person. And the law is on the books. And I ask Senator Ayotte, look at the law. The law says if you commit in any way fraud in the filing of this credit, you sh and you are guilty, you're found guilty of a felony, you will be fined not more than 100,000, 500,000 in the case of a corporation, or imprisoned not more than three years, or both. So here we have a situation where if fraud is committed by anyone claiming this child tax credit, Mr. President, they can go to jail for three years and be fined $100,000. But what does Senator Ayotte do? She takes the brush and she paints it all across America to immigrant families with children and says, we don't trust you. I think it is so offensive. It isn't fair for law-abiding, tax-paying families to lose their child, care tax, their child tax credit because of fraud that might be committed by a few. You know, I have to tell you, I have worked with a number of my colleagues, and they have identified billions and billions and billions of dollars of tax avoidance schemes in this country. We have corporations who use tricks so that they pay zero in taxes. I don't see Senator Ayotte, and I hope she will do this in the future, come down to the floor and rail against these wealthy individuals and corporations. No. She just goes after the weakest constituency. Children. Children. Why should any of us attack children? Literally take food out of the mouths of children. Why? 
We need to keep our promise to the veterans, but we should keep our promise to the children. You don't say, I'll restore one promise, but I'll break another promise. We already have a law in the books. Mr. President, if anyone is guilty of fraud in this program, they go to jail for three years, they could be fined up to 100000 I just think it is so wrong. It is so wrong. We can do this. Now, I, I want to close by reading from Sister Simone Campbell, Executive Director of Network, a National Catholic Social Justice Lobby. And I know Senator Dermott has quoted this, and I hope I'm not being too repetitive, but her words ring to my heart. Some of you know about nuns on the bus. These were nuns who saw the injustice in some of the budgets that came before the Congress. And they went on a bus and they said, please, don't cut funds for the most vulnerable people. That's not America. We're already losing the middle class. Mr. President, do you know that 400 families are worth more in this country than 150 million Americans. Think, I want you to think about it. 400 American families are worth more than 150 million Americans. Surely we can do better than hurt our most vulnerable children as we aim to restore benefits to our veterans. So this is, this is what Sister Simone Campbell says about the AOT Amendment. For a while now, kids, particularly those in immigrant families, have been unfairly under attack in the Senate. And the only plausible explanation is unconscionable to score political points. This is Sister Simone. Senator Kelly Ayotte recently proposed variations of a plan to strip away the refundable tax credit that now goes to millions of children of tax-paying immigrant workers in low-wage jobs. She says, the proposal is misguided and antithetical to the gospel's call to care for children and those at the margins of society. It violates our long-held values as a nation, and it should be rejected. I tell you, I have such respect for Sister Simone Campbell, and the work of Network. Because they just don't read the gospel and go to church and practice their religion. They live it. They live it. And when they see things happening on this floor that hurt the most vulnerable people, they speak out. That's what nuns on the bus did. That's what Sister Simone Campbell is doing. This is what she says further. She says, Senator Ayat says she understands families' needs, yet she wants to deny a child tax credit to taxpaying immigrant families. Actions speak louder than words, and her proposal hurts families. Our political leaders should never place poor children in a position of competing with other vulnerable populations for funds and help pay for food and other basic needs. Deliberately harming immigrant families goes against the fundamental goodwill of Americans, including thousands of people we met last year as our nuns on the bus traveled 6,500 miles across the U.S. to speak for justice. Throughout our journey, she writes, we stood with, prayed with, and heard the stories of hundreds of immigrants who have long served the needs of our nation. Responsible leaders in Congress should look into their hearts and reject proposals like this one. The political tactic is not good for our economy, or the well-being of our entire nation, especially children who are the future of our country. We are better than this. So let's go back to our other chart as I sum up here, Mr. Mr. President. Senator Pryor, Senator Begich, and a group of senators, I believe, including uh, Senator Shaheen, Senator uh, Hagan, Senator Landrieu, I believe they're all on this proposal, as am I. With their sacrifice, 
military retirees paid in full. They paid in full. And to offer amendments that have nothing to do with the subject matter, but open up an entire battle on immigrant families who are working so hard because there are some examples of fraud, just as there are examples of fraud in corporate America. Unfortunately, there's example of fraud all across America, including in politics, OK? But I have to say, to go after the most vulnerable children and the most vulnerable families and try to convince this United States Senate that that's something fair, I just think it's off the mark. And I hope we will reject the Ayat Amendment. I hope everyone will read what Sister Simone said, that the proposal to go after children is misguided. It is antithetical to the gospel's call to care for children and those at the margins of society. It violates our long-held values as a nation, and it should be rejected. And I want to remind everyone, if anyone commits fraud in this society, I will be the first one on the floor saying, go after them. And we already have a law that is very, very clear. Anyone who commits fraud in connection with the child credit, refundable credit, shall be guilty of a felony, and upon conviction shall be fined not more than 100,000, 500,000 in the case of a corporation or imprisoned not more than three years. If my friend on the other side of the aisle believes that justice isn't doing enough, the Justice Department or the IRS isn't doing enough to go after this fraud, I got to say, let's call the folks in charge. Let's tell them that we want to make sure that there is an effort. Write a letter. But don't say, because a few people are doing a bad thing and should go to jail for it, don't take your paintbrush there and paint every immigrant family who have dreamers with this. This is outrageous to do, and especially to claim that you're, you know, you're not doing anything to hurt the children and you're doing it to help the veterans. The veterans have paid in full. Let's vote for the veterans, okay, for the veterans and for the children. You vote for the veterans by voting for prior. You vote for the children by voting no on the mean-spirited I-Ot amendment. Thank you very much, and I yield the floor.